It was nearly a year ago that Strong disappeared in Ogden. For every missing person, there's a family, and for them, the search continues. Drive her down. If I went missing or somebody in my family went missing, I would really hope that there was guys like AWP and guys like us that would chip in their own time, money, and resources to be able to help find my loved ones, because you know, law enforcement's limited. All right, my friends, today we are searching for a missing person. Um, got a call last night from Doug with Adventures with Purpose. You guys know uh, Doug and Jared, good buddies of ours. You know, they do these big tours across the country where they go to all these different states and they hit these different missing persons cases, um, one state at a time. And uh, they've had some wild success lately. They found uh, that Keely Rodney girl that was missing out near uh, Lake Tahoe. He hit me up and said that there's a guy named Shane Strong um, from Ogden, Utah. Went missing last November, November 2021. Uh, left a kind of a family get together, was heading home, was never heard from again. Uh, the reason why we're searching for him is because he drives a very recognizable uh, orange Impala, which nobody has found, which potentially leads us to believe, leads to, you know, Jared and Doug to believe that the car could be in water somewhere. There's a lot of water up here in Ogden. So he hit me up and said, hey, uh, we're gonna go search, and if we find something, we would love for you guys to help us get the car out of the water and figure out what's going on. So today, First things first, we're gonna head into the Ogden Police Department and meet with the detective uh, to get more information about the case to help kind of guide us in the right direction. From there, we're gonna take that information and head out to a couple of different bodies of water where we're gonna scan underwater with their equipment. And again, if we find something, which we probably will, whether it's the person we're looking for or just another car, dive down, see what the car is, and then uh, hook it up and pull it to the surface and see if we can help solve this case and bring closure to the family. These cases are super frustrating because when somebody goes missing without a trace and there's no answers, it's really hard on a family and friends and uh, you know, finding the person and finding the car, finding anything just helps them have a better understanding of what happened to their loved one, which is why this is such an important deal. So we're gonna head into the police station right now and uh, get some more information. I'd like to start off by thanking all of you guys for being so inviting and open to using us as a resource. Um, we have Dave here with his entire team and his resources that will be able to help us out today and we're here to help in any way we can. Yeah. Uh, so let's, let's just dive right into Mr. Strong and let's go over, um, it, it's no different from what you guys do. We'd want to develop a good victimology profile who he was, where he was from, maybe some of his characteristics, things he liked to do, so forth. Um, so when was the a, a day he was reported missing? So he wasn't, he was reported missing May 10th of this year. May 10th of 2022. this year. I understand that we suspect he was missing for quite some time prior to him actually being officially reported missing by family. Yeah, last known contact that I know of was November 17th of 2021. If, you know, from what I understood, it was just family thought he was one place and it took a while for the family as a collective to realize that he was missing. Okay. And uh, it, he was staying here in Ogden, correct? Um, but what is really suspicious at this point was he hasn't communicated with his mom, his kids. He always called us no matter what kind of things he was doing. But not this time. Yeah, pretty much everybody I talked to said it wasn't uncommon for him to, to disappear for a while, but it was very uncommon for him to disappear without still at least communicating with his children. And we've had Mother's Day go past, didn't contact mom, and kids' birthdays, and no contact whatsoever. And just, that's really, really suspicious to me. It's suspicious to you guys okay. as well. Yeah, absolutely. And we also know he's 48 years of age when he went missing. And he was just driving a 1977 burnt orange, bright orange Chevy Impala that's missing as well. Correct. Uh, license plate is L524F. Um, at this point, the license plate is expired. And I'm sure you guys have run LPR readings on it and no readings of the car anywhere. Yeah, the car's off the radar. You know, reports of it, they haven't, it hasn't been impounded. Um, nothing like that, so it's just it's just off the radar. Where are you guys at with the case right now? We're kind of at a, a dead end with the case. Um, you know, there has been rumors, there's been tips. Um, a lot of the tips are, are also several months old. Do you know when the, that letter was sent, the last known communication? No. The family 
didn't say when that was. That timeline is kind of kind of important, right? I yeah. mean, assuming he went missing in November, did was the letter sent in March? Was it sent in May? Was it sent before? I know, I know it, it was it was fairly recent, or it was recent in time frame to when he disappeared. It wasn't something that they received like several months later. Yeah, and supposedly his son has it. The letter. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Was it mailed? Did they say it was mailed, but no, there was no postmark on it. No, so, so he put it in the mailbox. That's what I'm. I'm thinking someone had to put it in the mailbox if it wasn't postmarked. Uh, what year is the Impala? It says '97 on here, but I don't. It's, it's a '77. '77. Gotcha. Do we know? Do we know if he had any like health-related issues or anything like that? None that the family or friends knew of. He did have a history of substance abuse, but no. You know, there was no ongoing health issues that the family was aware of. Where was the um, the, the location where he left from, the address? It was a uh, uncle's house. Up on 37th, was yeah. that? What we're working with now is them trying to figure out like when they last saw him, you know, because so many months went by. Right. So they're trying to, there could be some inaccuracies in that, but they're, yeah, they're just going the, up on The memory. original report is like he left a family at party yeah. after grilling chicken and it was very yeah. specific. Mm -hmm. So maybe not be that specific. So I know Pineview gets searched all the time, or there's reports of cars going off the edge all the time. Do you know when the last time a car was pulled out of there? About two weeks ago. Two weeks ago? And was yeah. that a recent car that had just gone in? Uh, I've been missing since about about two years. Was that a missing person or stolen car? No, just... it was abandoned. Okay. It was stripped and thrown in. Uh, we have side scan, but we really don't search that area anymore unless we have a reason to. Yeah. Ninety percent of the vehicles found in Pine View are on the SR39 side. Is that the south, south side? side? Okay. Uh, mile marker 14.2. Oh, right off the edge there? Right off the edge there. And are there currently vehicles still in the water that you know of right now? None that we know of, but you'll probably find one. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I see stuff pop up all the time. When's the last time you guys did a kind of a thorough scan? It's been a couple years. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, we really don't scan in there anymore unless we have a reason. So, so not since he's been missing. Yeah. 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 Anytime uh, we find something underwater, our, it, we, it's a crime scene until proven otherwise. Correct. So we will, our, my main objective is to identify and assess it, reach out to you guys. If it's what we're looking for, then you know, obviously it's a completely different scenario at that point. You know, then we're here to lend our resources as much as you guys need them. Pineview is a, a number one nice target for us. Well, the police is working with extremely limited information. They're working with a report that was filed six months after he went missing. They're working with dates that aren't sure. There's like no credible, like solid last known location. No addresses yeah. that are exact, no yeah. dates that are. Dude, this letter is blowing my mind. Mm -hmm. You have a non-postmark letter that showed up in a mailbox, but you don't know yeah. when. Yeah, he's missing. He's missing with his vehicle. Right. He's missing from here. Right. And the vehicle hasn't been found. Like he's got him. And he had connections to the valley up there with the two lakes. Yeah. Right now, you want to head up to Pineview? Yeah, let's head up there. Okay, let's perfect. Right okay, we're on it. Let's do it. So guys, I'm actually, I'm more optimistic about this search than I have been kind of any other that we've done recently because the areas that we're going to search haven't been searched with side scan sonar in years, two or three years. So whether we find him or some other cars, I got a good feeling about finding something today. All right, so we are in search area number one. This is uh, the finger here on Pineview uh, Reservoir. And what's unique about this spot is there are roads that go on both sides of the finger right next to the water. So you can see up there, there's a tow truck. Um, our guys are hiking down the hill. That's essentially the road right there, which means um, there's a good opportunity for cars to fly off of there. The sheriff was telling us that cars are launched off there all the time when people either abandon them or you know stolen vehicles or whatever. So the plan here is to basically scan this entire finger both sides all the way down as close as we can get to the dam. Essentially, this is gonna be base camp up here um, at the turnout where the sheriff said is the most popular spot for people to launch cars. So the guys have got the mobile command center up there with Ogden PD. Our guys have got the tow truck. We've got the Adventure of the Purpose trailer getting pulled over there. So that's gonna be kind of the home base. If we're gonna find a car, it's gonna be in here. I, I'm pretty certain we're gonna find at least a car in here, whether it's the car we're looking for 
that's a different story, but uh, you know, the sheriff wants cars out of here and uh, hopefully we can find one. It's uh, getting the day started off with a bang. I mean, ultimately, pulling trucks and equipment out of mud, it's fun and it makes for, you know, entertaining content, but searching for missing people is a whole different animal. I mean, this is, this is bringing closure to a family generations of families that potentially might not have it otherwise you know if i went missing or somebody in my family went missing i would really hope that there was guys like awp and guys like us that would uh chip in their own time money and resources to be able to help find my loved ones because you know law enforcement's limited they can only do so much so that's why these private agencies that do this make a big difference and and what's cool is the influence of this type of content is growing more and more people are getting into it because they want to help um, and and fortunately there's a lot of viewers on YouTube and other places that love watching it so it's like this very symbiotic relationship that uh, just seems to be working and, and uh, it's cool to be part of it we've got a pretty sonar set up in here really? yeah is so is that new or is that the same one this is old one. No, oh. new one. This is a new boat. Okay, okay. All so right. it's got the full Garmin sonar. It's reading the bottom pretty well. Nice. Yeah. How, how deep do you have it right there? I've got it set on auto or 25. I don't know how to read it, but it's, it's I'm nice, seeing something. Nice we just need to make a couple passes. Okay. That's pretty much it. That's where we're at right now. We're just cool. scanning. And... We're just going to learn how to use the sonar then. <laughs> well, the search has officially begun. And, uh... Adventures with Purpose guys, Doug and them are over there in their boat doing, you know, what they do best, which is scanning with the sonar. Turns out we've got a pretty sweet sonar system here in the Pavati as well, so uh, the only problem is not real familiar with using it, but it's kind of self-explanatory, but at the same time kind of not. I think for the most part we're seeing a lot of fish. Those fish? Those are pure fish. What? Yeah. That's, a, that's the tiger musky, my friend. That's the toe start, nibblers and We need to start tying shoelaces together with jerky on the bottom. I'm, I'm gonna come back. I'm, what I'm doing now is I'm get a little bit further out okay. to get a different angle to make sure we're not missing anything. And I'm gonna do that the same way back around the horseshoe, little arm here. Okay. Keep it going. Yeah, we're. I mean, we're looking at kind of the same thing as you. So, if anything major pops up. Sonar picked up kind of a block under uh, the water here that uh, we actually picked up on ours and Doug is, is spending some time on it. So they got a magnet in the water, which they're dropping down to see if it's a boulder or if it's a car. Because if it's a car, it's going to be metal, the magnet's going to stick to it. Um, which I believe I have a car. Yeah? Is it that, that big clump that was right there? Um, there's right. two of them, but one definitely looks like a car. When you're further out where you are, our, um, our clump put right the magnet on it now to confirm. The magnet doesn't lie, so the, the magnet will confirm if it's a car or not. Yeah. You can see it's like 20 feet deep. Okay. So not deep at all. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of fish around it too as well. Which I've seen a ton of fish which, right here. Which, which is kind of common around any car because they, they, they'll tend to use it as a habitat. Yeah. But also with somebody who is less than a year, they're, they're still feeding. Yeah. If that's the case. I wonder, it's probably the same thing we're seeing. We're seeing like a bunch yeah, of fish right there. Yeah, it's right. It's it's right here. Sure. I actually this is, it, yeah. I think, what he's picking up right here. All right? It's a lot of something. Uh, what? I mean, I guess it should be touching the ground, though. Cold. That looks like a car. I see them there. Right there. That's the second one. Yep. Yeah. So those right there are abnormal lumps. Still look like they have like dirt kind of mounded up around them. This would be a good place to jump off of. I mean, this was this is the first turnout right here. I mean, if you're hauling ass, you come down that. It looks like a long, low profile old car coming from he was coming from Ogden, I think, right? Could have been. Um, the Either first way. turnout, I mean, yeah. there's a guardrail right there. Yeah, it stops though. It stops, so he could have launched straight yeah. through there. Dang. See, that's, that's a weird, irregular shape lump right here. And then around it, you got a bunch of fish, and fish love the cars. So right there, you've definitely got something that is not, uh, not, a, normal, not a normal piece of the lake bed. 
but there actually looks like there's possibly two cars right side by side. Um, the reason why that's so critical is because right there, the road has a turn off that somebody could have just gone whoop, straight off. Let's ask Doug to look at that. We got two cars located so far. One on the north side of the lake, one on the south side. So now we are headed back over to the marina to the uh, Adventure of the Purpose trailer and we're going to load up all the dive gear, all the air tanks, everything that we need to be able to go back and get on those cars. Now, we're going to do this recovery differently than the last couple we've done with Adventure of the Purpose, which we do with the big lifting bags. Instead, Doug's going to get down there, identify the car, uh, get the license plate, see if there's any bodies in them, and then from there, uh, we're gonna get permission from the sheriff to be able to recover them. So he'll run basically chains and lines down to the cars and we will pull them straight up out of the bottom of the lake from the, with the tow truck from the shore. So we're not gonna lift them with the lift bags. We're just gonna pull them straight out from the side of the road with the tow truck. And uh, we should be able to pop two cars out here today and we still don't know if they're just abandoned cars or maybe the car we're looking for or some other car. It's gonna be interesting. So this is where the, uh, the day gets exciting. And it's shallow. One car's at 20 feet, one's at 40. So these are really easy dives. If this is what we're looking for, we have everything that we need, it's accessible. We got our synthetic straps, endless loops, doubled up with protective uh, lace on them. One of these extreme high grade chains. We're not gonna be using lift bags today because these cars are really easy. We're providing answers to families that are living with a nightmare of not knowing what happened to their loved one. That's why we do what we do. You know, when we provide those answers to families, it's powerful that moment once they know. You know, it's to lose somebody you love and not know anything, not have a trace, not have a clue as to what happened to them. That's tough. You know, we're as humans, we're not designed to live with that kind of pain of not knowing. So. Hunting these cars and trying to help solve cold cases. It's the answers, man. It's all in the answers. Time to get in the water. Time to dive. We uh, we got Doug's dive gear. He's uh, pretty much geared up. Easy dive. 40 feet, right? About that. We're popping down right now just to identify and assess. Yep. Uh, once we identify and assess, local authorities will make the determination on how we proceed. So we at least know we have two dives coming, two both on each car, one on each car just to identify and assess. Yep. As if it's not our vehicle, it could very well be something else connected to something else. Yeah. So uh, when I get back up, we'll have all the answers on condition, uh, positioning, and, and, and hopefully there's some identifying markers on it like a license plate. Divers in the water. About 19 feet of depth. I'm at 20 feet, 20 feet, 21 feet. 35 feet, 35 feet. Divers at 35 feet. I've made it to the vehicle, our feet. I'm on a vehicle. Oh, 
Visibility is about six inches. Vehicle is upside down, I repeat. Vehicle is upside down. Vehicle is upside down. Vehicle is silver in color. I repeat, silver in color. I have a license plate in hand. I repeat, I have a license plate in hand. I have the license plate. I repeat, I have the license plate and I'm heading back up top side. Okay, he's, he's got the plate. He's coming up to the top with it. That was good. Got ourselves a license plate. That is not the plate that we're looking for. Is that what kind of car is it? Some type of Chrysler. Chrysler? Zero visibility. Can you see it? It's, it's a plastic Chrysler. Like a newer? Yeah. That one really easy to recover. You know? I'll hook onto that frame and that suspension is never coming off. We know that wasn't the car we're looking for. And this possibly could. Anytime you find a car underwater, there's no such thing as a car underwater for a good reason. So, um, any, any, no, no, not stolen. Is it in the system? Uh, they're pulling up more information right now, but it's it's not marked as stolen. So there's no recent history on it. Wow. Like if, if that's somebody that didn't have anybody in their life or. You know, nope. that's definitely a uh, find out who the owner is and see if the owner is, yeah. So it, it's it's pretty smashed. The windows are all broke. Uh, it's upside down. I checked as much as I could, but I, I mean I couldn't see anything. Ten hold. Diver down. Diver down. I've arrived at the vehicle, I repeat. I've made my way to the vehicle. He's at the car. Visibility's about three inches, I repeat, three inches. Making my way around the front of the vehicle. It's definitely a really old vehicle, I repeat, a really old vehicle. It looks like we have some type of reddish orange color. Old vehicle that's reddish orange. Driver's side, front window is down. I repeat, driver's side, front window is down. We're gonna have an, uh, an extended cab. Silverado, maroon in color. I repeat, an extended cab. Silverado, maroon in color. Silverado 2500, burgundy in color. Clear. 2,000. Like at the very least, it's gonna make it really easy recovery. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, initially, right off the bat, doesn't look like it's stolen. No involvement, at least, uh, with the local agency. Okay. But we just keep looking through different um, databases and resources that we have, to see if we can come up with anything that's associated with this vehicle, registered owner information, or. Um, any contact that it's had with anybody outside of our local jurisdiction. I, I landed on it and I thought I, I thought it was an orange. It looked orange with the silt on top of the burgundy. Oh, and I wipe it and it's burgundy. I thought I thought it was our car. You see what we have though. I mean these cars need to come out. They're not good for the environment. At the very least, this is a huge win for the marine environment today. Big time. Looks like we have a couple of old old vehicles that uh, somebody crashed in there. What happened? So that's what we're trying to figure out. Pull them. About to go down and rig it. I got all my rigging set up here. We're gonna zip line the rigging down to it. Once we get it rigged, uh, Dave's up there already with the wrecker. Diesel's down there already with the line. He's climbed down the cliff already. So I'm gonna rig it, run my line up to the buoy, go out and grab the line from Diesel, connect them, pull it up. We'll be out in no time. Right here. 
tow truck top of the mountain. Around the winch cable all the way out. Hooked a big long cable to that cable, to the winch cable. Ran it all the way out. They now have straps around the front or the rear wheels. I don't know which one. Around the wheels, hooked to the cable. The cable, he's coming out now. So now it's party time. We just start pulling now and uh, hope for the best. Not expecting anything terribly crazy in this truck, but then again, visibility was only three inches. So uh, Doug was not able to tell whether there was a body in there or not. So just uh, gonna get to the shoreline here at the edge of the water. Sheriff's office will head down there, check it out, see if there's anything that we need to stop and be more sensitive about. We'll get that truck pulled up. And over there, grab the other car. So far today in our search for Shane Strong, we've uncovered two vehicles here in this lake. The first one behind me, a truck. We've already pulled it out. It's getting ready to go up this cliff. This is still a very extremely challenging recovery, not to mention we still have another vehicle over 40 feet. Stay tuned. We got the truck out of the water and uh, it's basically on the shoreline. We got the sheriff down there. He's digging through it and uh, we're going to uh, see what's in there. If anything, if nothing, then keep on tugging it. A good recovery <laughs> when that happens. Oh, hey, buddy, get you back in the water. Oh, you yeah. ah, that was a perfect saving the marine environment, saving right. fish, pulling cars out. Pop our rigging off, and you still want to grab the other one today? Let's do it. We're hooked. That one went much faster. Uh, waiting for Doug to get to the surface, and we'll start pulling. This one should go quite a bit faster. Vehicle number one out of the lake. We got it up on the turnout up there. It was a big Chevy Silverado 2500. Pretty clean truck for what it was back in the day. Only 86,000 miles. Uh, we got it out. The uh, state, uh, or the county sheriff is going to have uh, another tow company come grab it, take it to the impound lot. And we've got, I love how I look at my wrist like I have a watch. I don't think I've worn a rot watch for like more than two hours total in my life, but I always go. So we got maybe about an hour of daylight left. 7.14 p.m. Second vehicle is completely rigged on its way out right now. Dave's running the winch in. This Chrysler should be breaking the surface here shortly.
just pulling it against the gentlemen that is a wrap for today uh, we did not find uh, Shane we found two vehicles that nobody knew were there uh, neither of one of them had bodies in them both of them had weird backstories they've been there for quite a while uh, so that's good we cleaned up the local lake pulling out the minivan pulling out the uh, Chevy truck uh, tomorrow we're gonna do a separate video going to another lake up to Kazi Reservoir which is a much smaller but deeper and more nasty uh, lake and we're gonna keep searching because this was just uh, area this is basically location number one of three or four that uh, Doug and the guys want to search so we're not done yet we've got some serious good work done today uh, big shout out to uh, Weber County Sheriff uh, Forest Service for working with us uh, Ogden PD the detectives everybody just a great group of people uh, made this happen and uh, again just another opportunity to clean up our backyard so tomorrow uh, we we'll keep looking for Shane all right, guys, just a quick follow-up for you. Obviously, this first day of searching that we spent with uh, Doug and the team with Adventures with Purpose, we were only able to search one location, which was Pineview Reservoir. And since we spent the whole day searching and then the rest of the day pulling those two vehicles out, we didn't have time to search the other possible locations that we had originally talked about with law enforcement. However, the following day, Doug and the team did go to the 21st Street Pond and Kazi Reservoir, and they searched them both. And surprisingly, to me anyways, uh, they found nothing. I thought for sure there might be an old car or something in Kazi just because it you know, hasn't been searched and it's kind of a, you know, off the beaten path lake. So I was hoping to find a little bit more there, but uh, they searched everything, found that it was like 100, 110 feet deep, and they did a very thorough search of both of them and nothing popped up. So that's good news and that's bad news. The bad news is obviously we didn't find Shane or really any indication or any clue that points us, you know, in the right direction of helping solve this case and bring closure to his family. So uh, with that said, if anybody out there knows anything about Shane Strong or his whereabouts or his story or has any more information about his case, go ahead and shoot us an email to info at heavydsparks.com and uh, we'll pass the information on to the family and the authorities and do what we can to help solve this case. So for now, uh, I feel like we did a good job helping clean up the environment, pulling those vehicles out of the lake and uh, bringing more awareness to Shane's case and other cases like it. So big shout out to Doug, Jared, the whole team at Adventure with the Purpose. Those guys are doing phenomenal work and they are like the most well-oiled machine I've ever seen when it comes to just organization and the way they run their team and the way they create content. It's, it's pretty stellar. So link in my description below to their channel if you want to follow them and see more of what they're doing. They've had some very high profile cases um, throughout their career and, and some more recently that uh, I think you'll find very fascinating. So buckle up because uh, it's wild content.